I am Aras Bozkurt, an associate professor of distance education at Anadolu University, Turkey. Today, we will explore the concept of digital transformation and its implications in the educational landscape. The concept of digital is actually the process of gaining meaning of two component data areas with the combination of ones and zeros. Therefore, the most important action in the digital world is processing ones and zeros for a purpose. When we investigate how data transforms into wisdom, we can better understand the significance of information and digital transformation. In our binary world, the raw material is data. Data turns into information in a context. Knowledge is obtained by giving meaning to the information and understanding knowledge opens the way to the wisdom. We can better understand the value of information and information society when we examine the Toffler's notions. Toffler not mentions about three types of ways that deeply affect societies. The first wave is the settled agricultural society. This society replaced hunter-gatherer cultures. The second wave is industrial age society. And the third wave is the post-industrial information society. The most basic characteristic feature of the information society is that information is the determinant of power in every sense. The fact that information is at the center of the third wave has increased the need for information and as a result of this need, information has become at the center of every social development. The knowledge doubling curve also explains how information has become the most valuable material in 21st century. According to the knowledge doubling curve, until 1900, human knowledge doubled approximately every century. By the end of World War II, uh, knowledge was doubling every 25 years. And according to the IBM, the Internet of Things will lead to the doubling of knowledge every 12 hours. The increasing amount of knowledge is also related to the concept of half-life of knowledge. Accordingly, the shelf life of current and meaningful knowledge is decreasing day by day. Such a view requires us to adopt strategies such as digital transformation to better process the information. The ongoing change in the digital information age is also related to the network society. Manuel Castex defines it as a society whose social structure is made up of the networks powered by information and communications technologies. According to the idea of network society, the size and depth of networks will also determine the position that societies will have in the near global order. By the beginning of the 21st century, being digital has become an everyday routine. More than 4.5 a billion people now use the internet, while social media users have passed the 3.8 billion. The average internet user now spends 6 hours and 43 minutes online each day. It is really impressive that nearly 60% of the world's population is already online. The current state of the art in 21st century justifies why we need to understand digital transformation and this also requires to redefine it. Digital transformation is a continuous and dynamic process. It is therefore difficult to define what digital transformation is. On the other hand, we can say that digital transformation is the process of creating new opportunities and values by using digital technologies and strengthening social structures with digital technologies and making them more efficient. The basic components of this transformation are human, process design, and technology adaptation. From this point of view, human, which is one of the basic components of the digital transformation process, is the main subject in uh, digital transformation. In this process, technology is the object, 
and process design is the action verb. The fact that there are different components in this process requires explaining the digital transformation with a system approach and including all layers of transformed structure in this process. However, it should be noted that transformation is not an approach to leaving the old system completely, but to adapt the old system to keep up with the change and also upgrade the existing system to survive in the changing world. Digital transformation is a process in which there are many ways and stages which concerns the business models, strategic orientations and values of institutions, not only in terms of technological dimensions, but also social dimensions. For higher education, digital transformation is a necessity both to capture the change and to gain ability to compete in the global race. Supporting these ideas, the COVID-19 pandemic also proved that self-adaptation and ability to change is significant in many aspects, including survival, not only for humans, but also for educational institutions. According to Adam Tuffler, the illiterate of the 21st century will be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn. This notion implies that the social profile has changed in the digital information age. And, a, and as a result of this change, there have been changes in the roles of learners, teachers, and higher education institutions. This means that educational institutions need to reposition themselves in the transformation process by adopting the digital transformation strategies. Along with the digitalization, virtual online projections of the physical offline world have also started to be created. And with this trend, the concept of digital twins has emerged. In addition to digital twins, digital online ecosystems start to be used for educational purposes as individuals began to express themselves with the digital identities uh, they created in online environments. Digital education is an umbrella term used to describe the learning and teaching approaches that have emerged to meet the new needs with the developing technology. Referring to a combination of e-learning and learning and e-learning, digital education can be defined as online distance education. However, there are a few points in the digitalizational education to further consider. First, technology is a tool for delivering educational content. It is not a goal. Second, we have to adopt soft technologies such as uh, theories, approaches and models and hard technologies such as computers and mobile phones in a harmony. And third, we should get the right mix when we apply the hard and soft technologies in the digital uh, education processes. Designing an efficient, effective, and attractive learning and teaching process in digital environments is not only related to the use of hard and soft technologies. It is also about the digital competencies, skills, and literacies of the stakeholders involved in this process. In the digital information age and digital society, the raw material of change and information uh, transformation is information. However, a question that needs to be considered as a priority is that how do you position the human as a subject in this transformation process? Additionally, another question would be are we guided by human and learner-centered uh, approaches or uh, are we guided by technology-centered approaches? A scenario where the subject is human can create possible success stories. However, in a scenario where digital technologies are the subject, we reduce the human-centered understanding to a passive state and this means that the future will be shaped by technology, not by humans. At this point, the critical evaluation that needs to be made is 
whether digitalization is a means or an end. Within the scope of this critical evaluation, it is extremely important to understand the, uh, to interpret and to position it correctly in the transformation process. In fact, digital transformation isn't about decorating our ecosystems with digital tools, but to strengthen the ecosystems with digital processes. Uh, in this final section, there are some questions to answer. Before I provide my answers, please answer these questions in your inner world. Question 1. What impact does the digital transformation have on teaching and learning? I would say that digital transformation will help to process the information, which means that digital transformation will result with capacity increase in teaching and learning. Question 2. What will higher education institutions and teaching and learning look like in the future in terms of the digital transformation? I believe that both higher education and teaching and learning will look the same, but the tools we, we use will be more effective. Besides, higher education will be more resilient against the change if they can achieve the digital transformation. Question 3. What are the challenges and obstacles of digital transformation in teaching and learning? I would say that the biggest challenge is adopting a technocentric approach which would harm the digital transformation process. In the end, teaching and learning is for human and technology is only a means rather than an end. Thank you for being here and listening to me. For further inquiries and discussions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. Thank you again.